hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Put both hands up as high as you can and really praise God out loud. Give him voice. Lift up your voice. Hallelujah. In heaven, the 19th chapter of Revelation, the praise is so loud. It sounds like ocean clapping. Oh, hallelujah. Overwhelming, extravagant, love beyond anything, reckless. And he loves you. Father, we do want to love you and worship you. You're worthy. You deserve every bit of the worship. And if we ever come short, it's being praiseful and worshipful enough. And so, God, let something happen today. Stimulate us, inspire us, change us. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. And everybody clap your hands unto the Lord and shout unto Him with a voice of triumph. You may be seated. I want to tell you something that uh, is unique that I have never preached a sermon that I don't get a confirmation of before I preach. I'm always prepared to go a different way, should God lead. And here's how it happens, and you should know it. It'll either be the songs that are selected. In this case, every song that was sung is in my message. And, and Nicole or whoever put these together did not know. Secondly, it is a prophetic word will come and that will declare, usually the opening of the, <laughs> it's so amazing. And, but today I want to speak about how to flourish. Say that with me, how to flourish. If I have one compelling desire today for you, it is that you flourish. That you flourish. That you flourish. And I'm going to give you 20 points in the limited time. <laughs> it's Memorial Day. <laughs> Open your Bibles to Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. I think the words will be on the screen, verse 7 and 8. Bless it are those who trust in the Lord and made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like a tree planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep in the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green, and they go right on producing fruit. Look at Trust in the Lord and make the Lord their hope. They'll be like a tree planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water, and they are not bothered by heat or... <laughs> Months of drought. Anybody ever have months of drought in your spiritual life, in your life? Anyone? I went, someday, probably the next time I preach, I will give you the worst drought, the worst storm, the worst year of my entire life when the devil mocked me, when the devil tore me apart, tore at me, and I went through the worst possible tribulation that I've ever experienced. <laughs> but you know something about the Word of God? It's for people like that. He did not come to call the righteous to repentance. He's come to seek and to save the lost, the hurting, the broken, the needy. Now, before I give you 20 points, I want to give you Psalms 92. This is, this is 
because I am an old man, will be 86 in August. How many are 60 years and up? Put up your hands. Stand on your feet. I want to look and see all of you that are in my class. Hallelujah. I got a verse. Now, if I got a verse for you. I got, it's, it's for everybody, but I got a verse for you. Listen, it's Psalms 92, verse 12 to 14. But the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. For they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God, even in old age. They will still produce. They will remain vital and green. I got to get off of here. I can't, I can't, I, I just can't help but get emotional. I thought going and growing old would be horrible. <laughs> Until I read that verse. I'm evergreen. <laughs> I'm evergreen. I went to the, to the retirement house. I don't want to retire. I don't want to sit in a rocking chair and sing precious memories. <laughs> Listen, don't tell me. You're too old to be effective and to be luxurious. You're too old to be dynamic. You're too old to be flourishing. <laughs> I'm going to give you 20 points from the Word of God. And it's going to change your life if you listen. How many want to hear it? I won't, I won't, I won't give it unless I hear everybody say they want to hear it. Uh, if you want to hear it, you want to hear it? All right, I like this. They will still bring forth fruit in old age. <laughs> Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Every one of these words that you sung are in my notes. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. See, in this 17th chapter of Jeremiah, in an unexpected place, I never would have believed or expected that Jeremiah would come up with this. It's a full orb, powerful revelation. A truth, like a New Testament verse. It's, it's, it's full orb, powerful revelation. He makes an affirmation. Now listen to these big words. An affirmation that is so profound... So provocative, are you ready for this? So paradoxical that you can be flourishing in the time of famine. You can be flourishing in the time of famine. That don't make sense. <laughs> that you can be in the time of need, in the time of recession, in the time of depression, in the time of problems, in the times in a broken world, in a confused world, and the change in the culture that we now live in. In the time of famine, in the time of trouble, if there ever was a time when some of the prophets and some of the preachers ought to shake themselves and tell the people, this is not the time to be afraid, this is not the time to cower, this is not the time to be quiet and be still and let the communists and socialists and, and, and these idiots that want to run this country into the ground. It's time for the Church of Jesus Christ to say, it's time for our leaves to blossom and the fruit of the Spirit to be manifested. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to try to shout at you. I understand the danger of making a, a list. Buddy came up to me after the first service, and he gave me a revelation, and I'm going to do it. He said, you ought to put those 20 points in a book. You can spend, you know, many, many, many chapters just on each point. But I won't do it tonight. All right. 
I found that God wants you productive. And I found that the productive to me to ensure that my roots go down deep and I can be productive or I can choose to be non-productive. And the timing, listen to me, the timing is mine. I thought about, you know, a farmer. I talked to him. What, what, what does a farmer look for? What do they watch for? One of the things they watch for the signs of death. Obviously, they're thrilled about the signs of life. But being realists, they have to be watching for signs of death. And listen, and this is what I did in all the years that I've pastored. I looked at people, and I looked to see signs of life. But I noticed certain signs. For instance, grass that should be green. A farmer, and sees them turning yellow, he knows it's causing problems. Trees that should be producing a harvest have leaves that are, are white, whitening. Cattle that should be fat and healthy are thin and listless. All of us, including your speaker, we need to walk in such a way that somebody's watching out for the signs in our life that things aren't doing well. And I need to be open enough and willing enough for someone in loving kindness to come up to me and say, I notice you must be going through something. I want to speak in your life. Your leaves are beginning to turn yellow. Like a doctor who examined my wife and said, you know, that she had a, a bronchitis while we were in Hawaii and that it was very serious. And so we immediately submitted to the doctor. Now, all of us have to be ready to help somebody, to pray for somebody, to love somebody. And here's what make, makes it hard. If we don't have pride, we have fear and a number of other things, and, and we learn to hide our true signs of an unhealthy life by what I call charismatic cosmetic cover-ups. <laughs> Where are the oranges, the peaches, the apples? It's not intentional, but once in a while we have a major breakthrough and someone will say, I'm dying. I get calls like this and emails like this. I'm dying. I'm going through such a hard time. I don't think I'm going to make it. You know where I'm coming from? Where can I be uncovered and covered at the same time? I want to be a flourishing Christian. I want to be in a flourishing church. I, I want to see churches flourish. I take no delight in seeing a church dry up and die or an individual dry up. I just rejoice in that I see green leaves, I see productivity, I see worship, I see kindness, I see generosity. Listen to me. I care about green leaves, a lot of abundant fruit, and signs of a flourishing Christian life. Every one of us should flourish. Now, having said that, let me give you the list. First of all, you have to have an absolute assurance of the infilling, indwelling, empowering power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say Holy Spirit. Let's say infilling, empowering. Are you ready? Now, whatever it takes to get there, whatever, whatever arguments you have, Whatever, get out of an argumentative mood. Is it tongues? Is it this? Is it that? Just tell God you want to be empowered, that you're not walking in an empowered life. You don't know how many people at the first service said, I want to be empowered. How 
many want to be empowered? You can't survive, church. You cannot survive in 2018, 19, 20 without being empowered. You've got to be full of the Spirit of God. Get desperate. Get desperate. Turn the TV off. Go on a fast and say, God, I want you. You sang about it a while ago. You want God. You want him. You want to draw close to him. You want intimacy. He wants it more than you do. He wants to be intimate with you. Oh, my. Secondly, you need to know what it means to be enriched by the living word of God. And the living word of God being active in your life. What do I mean? Don't ever settle for just reading the Bible. I read 10 chapters. It's not how many chapters you read. Read until it quickens your life. It's got to be deeper. Get something every day. You may just have to read one chapter or maybe 10, but read until you get something. Underline it. I just challenge you to get it in your spirit. The word is empowering, sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts, it's a sword. Thirdly, I need to have a private life with God that is genuinely real for me. If it's not for anyone else, intimate fellowship. I pray with my wife, but I have to pray alone. I have to get alone with God every day. I come to the prayer meetings on Saturday. I missed yesterday because I had to be with my wife. She wasn't feeling good. But be willing to walk in your gifting. Pay whatever price you have to discover what it is. And whatever you do, don't be a square peg in a round hole. Every one of you have a gift. Every one of you have a call. Every one of you have a purpose. You can find it out. Don't live without purpose. Don't live without direction. It'll hurt your marriage. It'll hurt your children. It'll hurt your life. It'll hurt your emotions. It'll hurt you physically. So many Christians are sick. They're messed up. I need to make this thing so clear. And I wish that some way I could be gracious about that. But there are men and women in pulpits that should not be in the pulpits. I wish I didn't have to say that. That's not what their grace is. That's not what they are graced to do. It's just not there. I closed three churches. Personally, I closed three churches. Found out these men and women wanting God, but they didn't know their gift name. I think everybody has a calling, but everybody can't identify their calling. But you get full of the Holy Ghost, and God will show you what your calling is. Sign up right now for this team. Something's happening in this church. We want to see everybody active in their gifting. And then number five, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray with understanding. Pray in English, Spanish. But pray in tongues. You're missing a good deal to bypass your brain once in a while. When I talk in tongues, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but Romans 8, 26 says, we don't know what to pray for as we should, but the Holy Spirit will pray in and through us in groanings that can't be uttered and understood. Speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, singing in tongues. I have never done it when I am sad or worried or fearful or lonely, but when I start it, I'm sensing, I don't know what I'm saying. My wife and I are in Indonesia. We're in Indonesia. We don't know one word of Indonesian, but every day before we go to the big conference where hundreds of pastors are waiting for us to give them the word, we kneel down. We, we lived in the most awful places. I don't know how to squat in a little hole. I'm sorry. I've never been trained in the missions department how to squat. I need a flush toilet. And, but anyway, I was living in all kinds of things. And, uh, and then I heard that the Baptists, God bless the Baptists. They build a house for their missionaries. 
and the missionaries for two dollars rent it to a missionary. Well, I'm a missionary. I'm not going to squat. I go to the Baptist <laughs> parsonage. I put my two dollars down. Ah, take a hot shower and eat food that doesn't move. <laughs> and the people were not kind to me because I was Pentecostal. But you know, God, he knows how to speak. Shirley and I get down every day in our room and pray before we go to the big conference where hundreds of pastors are waiting. And we start singing in tongues. And Justin Cornwell, one of the greatest teachers in the world, he was with me to help me in the conference because he's a powerful teacher. I'm a preacher. I'm a revivalist. Oh, I'm noisy. <laughs> and he sits with Eleanor waiting for us to get done. After all, I have to speak. To these people and the Baptist missionaries walked by the door and they said this is Emmanuel and Shirley speak Indonesian Judson said no I could tell you a story they don't even know how to say hello and well they're singing in perfect Indonesian Come on. are you ready are you ready 50 Southern Baptist pastors now sing in the Spirit and are full of... Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get empowered. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Because he can say things in prayer, knowing the mind and will of God. Got to hurry. All right. Walk in a significant life-giving relationship. And that don't come easy. Men especially have a hard time making relationship, but I mean a life-giving, really. Listen, I get a call once a week from pastors to encourage me. Once a week. Mel Mullen, huh, Mel Mullen encourages me. I could start naming great men of God. They encourage me. Why? Because the devil discourages. The devil accuses. The devil says, you're no good. The devil says you're a phony. The devil says nobody wants to hear you. That you're too short. You just, you're that. You're too old. Ah! Ah! Shut up! <laughs> I need somebody to pick up the phone and say, I love you. I just heard you. There's a preacher that calls me. Here's every, he's going to hear this sermon. He calls me everywhere I go. He checks where I'm going to be. And then he plugs in to the internet or whatever it is. And he calls me and said, I heard your sermon. And he encourages me. We need, we need significant life-giving relationship. Number nine, be quick to repent. Be equally quick to forgive. I have never fallen asleep without asking my wife to forgive me. If I misunderstood her, if I scolded her, if I ignored her, We've made it a practice. You've got, you got to ask for forgiveness. It's joyful to repent. Kiss and make it up. Number 10, overcome any tendency to be judgmental. I mean any. Some of us have a call to fix people. That's not our call. Oh, who called you Dr. Fault Inspector? Where did you get your PhD? Don't let anyone, number 11, rob you of your smile. I just know there's a joy and a peace that's promised to me and an evergreen life, and no one has the right to steal it. No event has a right. No person has a right. It is a gift of God. I'm going to walk in it. I choose to walk in it. You've got to work at this thing. Never let anybody or anything no cop, no neighbor, no barking dog. There's a dog poop right on my porch. <laughs> we had five skunks under our, our a baby, a mother and a father and three babies. 
we got rid of them, but they didn't get my victory. Hallelujah. You get my scent? <laughs> Never mistake the anointing for maturity. I've lived too long. So you can preach. Big deal. You get paid to do that. So you can have a healing once in a while. So what? You didn't heal. God healed. <laughs> Hidden in the green room, I, I'm always preaching in churches, and they say, you want to stay in the green room? And there's chocolates and nuts and hors d'oeuvres. I said, no, I don't want to stay. I'm already green. I want to be in the worship service. Well, we, we, we always like the preachers to stay in there, and then they can come out. Here comes God's man of faith and power for the hour. I was with Joyce Myers. Her plane, she flew her plane, couldn't land in the little city. She had to go uh, to, to Newark, New Jersey. Anyway, we're in this big auditorium. 5,000 teenagers. 5,000 teenagers. And Joyce Myers came and they invited me and the, the man of the biggest church in Dallas, uh, uh, Baptist pastor, he was there. And so we were in the green room. And the, the person getting the, you know, the, the meeting together, he said, you guys stay in the green room. I said, uh-uh, I want to worship. Peanuts, popcorn, whatever they had. That, that isn't what Joyce Meyer said. I want to worship. And then the Baptist guy <laughs> from Texas has 35,000 people. He said, I want to go. And we all went out there. Joyce Myers was doing a little dance. I was doing a little dance. And, and the pastor was trying to do it. No. <laughs> what are you looking at me so funny about? I want to enjoy the presence of God. I want to be in the big middle of the atmosphere that's permeated with hallelujahs and praises. Oh, majesty, 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 holy God, sanctified, separate, above all, no one like him. I love it. I love to be in a worshiping church. Thank God for Gateway. Everybody say, thank God for Gateway. It's only in losing your life that you'll find it. Only in losing. If I become self-centered, God's kingdom suffers. The minute I, people call me, uh, Reverend Candace Tracy, Apostle C, whatever they call me, they say, we have a church. It's small. Would you come? And I said, why wouldn't I? Oh, well, I, why wouldn't I? Would Jesus come? Oh, we don't know. We can guarantee you. Guarantee me one thing. You'll listen to me preach. That's what you guarantee me. That's my job. That's my fun. That's how I live. I live because of God's great love to me. I can't keep it. I want to share it. Live your life with a God-given vision. Whatever it takes to get it. Don't live on anyone else's word. Don't live on secondhand information. Don't make it uh, mimic anybody. I, I saw men going like this. Have you been waiting for me? Well, Catherine Kuhlman did that. That, that. that didn't heal everybody. Don't take that. Be a man! And just be yourself. And God will honor you. And the blind will see and the deaf will hear. And the lame. You know that I've had eight miracles in the last seven days? I wish I had time to tell you. Eight outstanding miracles. Miracles. 16, enjoy the moment. My way of saying, live one day at a time. 90% of the people I meet are dreading yesterday's sorrows, are afraid of tomorrow's problem. You hear me say this often. Most people are wearing sackcloth. That is why church is so important. When we come together, Bible shows us in Acts 2, we pray for one another, we encourage one another, we strengthen one another, we help one another. We're part of the community. 
and there's body life, and there's energy, and there's empowerment, and there's a dynamic that flows. I can walk into a church and be discouraged or be disappointed, and just the atmosphere lifts me up before the sermon, before the preaching, the atmosphere, the handshake, the hug, the fact that somebody is interested in me. I hardly meet anybody that's incredibly happy. Absolutely sure they're in the center of, of the will of God. They think that it's humble to start bragging on all their faults and all their sins. Stop being anxious. Stop being worried. It's okay to have an idiot smile. <laughs> come on, everybody, come on. We used to sing a song. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord it is my strength. The joy of the Lord it is my strength. And then we sang, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. I know, I know what you're saying. You're crazy, Apostle C. I know. I'm cracked. That's how the light got in. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, listen. Never allow fear to control your life. When I started out, I was young. I was afraid of my shadow. I, I enjoyed the remarks of Nicole. I was so intimidated. I was so afraid. Preaching at 15 is not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. And if you don't say amen, I'll quit. <laughs> Perhaps love casts out fear. Half of the people don't like you anyway. So don't try to live for them. Discover the power of thankfulness. It's a power source. Be thankful in everything, not for everything. Somebody smashed my car. Don't be thankful for that. But thank God you got insurance. <laughs> Five of my family members, five, totaled their car in the last six months. Five. Total. They all got brand new cars. That isn't what I'm rejoicing about. Five of them didn't even have a scratch. Would you give the Lord a hand clap? <laughs> Devil wants to kill Robin still, but you've got Psalms 92 and you've got Jeremiah 17. I'm ready now. Discover the power of thankfulness. Somebody said to me the other day, if I had a billion dollars, I'd give it to you. No, you wouldn't. Be faithful in the small things, in the little things. These things are sources that are helping me to flourish. Lead a productive life. Lead a victorious life. You're going to flourish. You're going to have green leaves. And the last one, is be faithful in the least and you'll be trusted in the more. Be faithful in the least and you'll be trusted in the more. Listen to me. Listen to me. You don't have to be, you don't have to be in a certain spot in a certain meeting right now. You can get God to come in to your life right now, right now. You, he will come in and fill you and empower you. He will start the process of really flourishing, flourishing. This begin that strengthen that empowerment, endowment, endowment. Just be released. Put up both hands as high as you can. I'm going to ask God to come by the Holy Ghost right now. This little boy at four years of age in my daddy's music store knelt down and God filled me with the Holy Ghost with the speaking to Shapura, speaking in other tongues. No preacher was there. Nobody was there. It was just dad, mom, and the nine children. And God baptized every one of us in a music store. And we all got full. Come on, everybody. Praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. 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 Hell just, keep, just, just keep in your mind that God 
is anxious to fill you. Reckless, extravagant love. He wants to fill you. He wants to empower you. He don't want you to struggle all your life. He wants you to be evergreen. Famine comes. Dark nights come. Trouble comes. But you can be flourishing in the middle. Come on, everybody. Put up your hands as high as you can. We're going to say a prayer. We're going to say a prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, help me to be a flourishing Christian. Take your hands down, every eye closed, every head bowed. About nine people raised their hands this morning. Right now, if you don't know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior by experience, by having him residing in you. He said he would come and make his abode in you. He would come and sit on the throne of your heart. He will come and occupy your heart, your soul, your mind. He wants in and he loves you and extravagantly he's been seeking you. He even kept me up hours to prepare this message. He wants you. He loves you. He'll climb the mountain for you. He will. He'll, he'll go for that lost sheep. He'll go for the backslider. He'll go for the lukewarm believer. He'll go because he loves you, wants you. He's not mad at you. He's not angry. He's saying, come, you that are weary and tired and broken. Come unto me. Now, with your heads bowed and eye closed and nobody looking, I want to make this appeal as I did in the first service. If you're here and you're not flourishing and you're not dynamically filled with the presence and power of God and you want to get rid of the guilt and the condemnation and the fear, you want to get rid of all of these things that are holding you back from a full life, from a flourishing life that he promised you both in Jeremiah and over 5,000 other verses similar to those in the Bible that promises you a walk in his presence. Enoch walked with God. And God said, you're closer to my house than your home. Come home. Enoch went to heaven without dying. You can walk with God and overcome every obstacle, every difficulty. But you've got to give God your heart and life. If you're here and you say, I do want that life. Pray for me. Just slip your hand up right now. God bless you. God bless you. Put it up high where I can see it. God bless those one, two, three, four over there to the right. God bless you over there, young lady. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody now raise your hands. We're going to say a prayer together. Would you say it out loud? I'll try to be slow. Dear Lord Jesus, I heard the word today. How to be, how to be flourishing. I want to flourish. I can't do it without you. Come on in now, Lord. Come into my life. Save me now. Forgive me now. Wash me now. Cleanse me of all of my sins. Today, Lord, is the beginning of a brand new change. A brand new dispensation of my life. Thank you, Lord. Come on, everybody. Begin to praise God out loud. Begin to praise God. Speak in other tongues. Let the Spirit of God fill you. God bless you folks. What a good audience. What a good audience. Uh, did I say you would never have trials? Did I say you'd never have problems? Did I say you'd never have famine? No. I didn't say that. I said it won't affect you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Evergreen. Let's put our hands together this morning for Apostle C. Thank you, sir. How many were blessed this morning? You got something out of that. Amen. Hey, listen, uh, we're going to ask the ushers to come forward. We're, we're going to receive our offering now. And uh, I wanted to 
throw a, a, a slide up on the screen here to prepare your offering, but there's a number of ways that we give here uh, at Gateway. Most of you know, you know, we have the envelopes and we have the little bags that we pass, but just as a reminder, on the bottom there, text to give, uh, that's how I do all my giving. I know Pastor David does his giving, it's all through text. You could uh, text GCCSJ to 77977 and set up an account with PushPay, and it's amazingly simple. You can do that, and that's one of the, the options, but up on the top is something that's new. See, we have these cards that we put in the seat backs, and if you had made a decision to give your life over to Christ this morning, or you need prayer, or you want to find out more about Gateway or how we can get you connected here, we encourage people to fill this out and drop it in the bag uh, this morning here. Or you can text, and this is brand new for us here, you can text uh, CONNECT to 408-389-8338. Let's leave that up just for a second back there, uh, uh, Natalie here, so people can write that down. And what we do is we are using the texting instead of using the card. So you have different ways of really uh, finding out how to get more connections here at uh, Gateway, how to get uh, more ministry or get involved in different ways. So make sure you write that down. But ushers, well, they already are passing the bag here. We have something very special this morning. Uh, Pastor Jordan, why don't you come on up here and tell us we got a group of interns that we're going to bless. Apostle C is going to pray for them. Why don't you invite them up here and then tell us a little bit about what you're doing here and uh, how we can be a blessing to them. So you guys see, so guys, go ahead and stand on each side of. Some of you can come over here. Just make sure you're in the light. So you guys see some of our, some of our reality interns, and these are young men and women who've, dedicated the last year some a lot of them this is not their first year but dedicated the last year of their lives just to building the kingdom of God so these guys right here they run the youth group they do the worship they do the media they do the connect team they run the small groups they run Sundays and uh, in the beginning of the year every summer we have our reality internship academy that they took two weeks of their summer and they were here every single day just getting poured into by your pastors and by uh, friends of the ministry. And they've decided that they want to build the kingdom of God. So what we're going to do today is we're going to ask Apostle C just to pray a blessing over them. And we want to recognize their accomplishment of the last year of service to God and service to, to this church. Will you guys give it up for your interns? I know... Apostle C, please come and, and just pray for them. You know, Jordan, this church had a revival way back in 71, 72, and it was all teenagers, 17, 18, 19, and they got to praying, they got to seeking God. Did you know that Pastor David was an intern? <laughs> This church believes in internship even in your age. And so no limit to what God will do. Everybody stand to your feet and point your finger at them. We're going to impart to them the 20 points. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Here's a volunteer army of young men and women. <laughs> They've volunteered and made commitments to serve you with their gifts and their callings and their purposes that you have revealed to them. Unsung, unnoticed, no magazines, no radio, no television with their name on it, but just to serve God and serve each other and to serve this church. That is the highest honor. <laughs> the highest honor to serve God. Think about it, young people. Serving God. There's nothing any better. There is nothing to be a rock star, a movie star, a governor, or even president. There is nothing like serving God. Not that they can't serve God being the governor, but you are not a governor. You are not a president, but you are a believer. You're a child of God. You are a beloved of God. 
You have a call. You have a destiny. Father, bless them now. Put up your hands, young people, and get full of what I preach, the full of the Holy Spirit. Be empowered. Be empowered. Pastor, just lay hands upon them just quickly. Everybody, right now, out loud, pray that they'll be empowered, that they'll be released. Let their giftings and powerful anointing come upon them. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless a, a Pastor Jordan, God, in a special way as he leads this army of interns. And there'll be hundreds and hundreds more in the years to come. Hallelujah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's keep them all in prayer as God's got a plan for them. Hey, listen, we're going to have people come up here uh, to be on their prayer teams to be able to minister to anybody here. If you need anybody, you need any prayer, come on up here. Uh, also, we're going to be releasing here. I'm going to say a blessing over everybody. And I want to encourage for those that are new, come on down to the Welcome Weekend, room 201, right down the hallway. And uh, right now, let's just all pray. Father, I just thank you for this day. I speak in Jesus' name that the authority of your grace and the flourishing come alive, Lord, within this house. And that, Lord, regardless of the storms or whatever may come, Lord God, we're going we're gonna to be growing here at Gateway. We're going to be those evergreen people. Father, we just prophetically declare that whatever comes our way, we're going to be walking in your victory. And, Lord, we just speak blessing over that, uh, over everything every person here this morning in Jesus name and on the count of three if you believe that let's give God one more praise one two three yes come on God bless you I'll see all the new people down at the welcome weekend yeah otherwise come on up and get some prayer God bless